episode number 392. It's much better to say, we do this for these people. We do websites for dentists. Mm -hmm. You know, if if it's really clear what you're offering and what people are going to get out of it and who you're for, that is going to make it so much easier to get those top tier clients. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Hoff, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Huff. Folks, you know your boy is fired up, but on days like this, days where I can actually bring you uh, some incredible value in your agency business uh, at whatever stage or level you're at, uh, because Mr. Brad Ferris is on the line and he helps businesses and creative agencies grow that revenue through Anchor Advisors. Mr. Brad, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, Travis. How are you? I'm doing awesome, sir. Are you ready to be real? I am. Let's go. Let's go. So take me back into your journey. Um, Because obviously, you know, you're helping a ton of different businesses. You're in Chicago, a very, uh, you know, tons of businesses and financial and all sorts of different things. But when you look at your website, you know, really focusing on helping creative services firms get that next step. You know, That's they're it. at 100,000, get to 500,000, they're at a million, right. get to 5 million. And the things that they can do, obviously, to nurture prospects, obviously, possibly, or maybe it's change content on their website. Maybe there's things that you, you know, can look at quickly and easily and you can tell them. Um, but where did you kind of find this uh, unique niche? Because it's it's a cool it's a cool part. I think it's a very important for uh, for agencies to find ways to grow. I uh, I spent about ten years working for a family owned company, not my family, the a bunch of billionaires. Got gotcha. you. And uh, the billionaires, the problem with billionaires is their kids think they should make just as much money as dad was making. Yeah. And so about every twenty five years, you need exponentially more cash. Right. To put you know, gas in the boats and the, the planes same, and the same the horses. Stuff. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, as you do. Um, and so my job was to buy small businesses that we thought could grow mm. to put gas in the plane, you know, or put food in the horses. And uh, so I spent a while buying small businesses and really looking. It's interesting when you buy a business, what you care about and what you don't care about. Right. And uh, so we, we did that for a while. Around 2001, the market for buying businesses was not so good. There was a lot of capital in the market. We couldn't, we couldn't, we were priced out. No good deals. Right. Kind of like so, it is lately, but you know, a little bit of shock in the last few months, but. Yeah. So, so I decided to switch sides of the table and work for the entrepreneurs right. to help them to grow their business to the point where they could eventually sell it. And uh, I just lucked out and my first couple of clients were agencies. And I thought, mm. oh my gosh, these are smart, creative people. Right. They, they're, they're service people. So they understand taking advice and, 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 uh, and paying for advice. And uh, so I ended up just working for a bunch of agencies and it's been, that's, that's kind of the story of the last 20 years. Isn't that crazy? You just yeah. find a sweet spot. And you lean in and you lean in and you lean in and you don't get diverted. That's the part two. But I'm sure in these last 20 years, the, 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 the things that they can do, uh, the, the, if you want to call it the marketing vehicles and the the types of content and the algorithms and the things that have changed in those 20 years, but the same discipline applies in that there's agencies out there that just need strategies. They need focus and they probably just need a mentor. If you want to call it a coach, someone that can help really help drive that. Because like in our social media agency, once you want, once you manage an, an auto dealership or a group of auto dealerships or a restaurant, it's easy to manage the next restaurant. Once you manage a LASIK doctor, it's easy to manage the next LASIK doctor. And then you see a trend. If you manage 10 LASIK doctors, it's easier to manage the 11th and the 12th and the 20th because you see trends in that That's uh, right. you know, content, marketing, what to say, what not to say, all the laws and things like that. And the same thing applies in your business in that once you work with one creative agency, it's very easy to apply some of the very successful tips that you've used. And maybe also you've learned because I'm sure every situation is a little different, right? I mean, every agency has some unique things that they have and maybe it's personalities or the way they get things done or, but then obviously there's some of the same things you got to execute, you got to put the creative out, you got to get, get it scheduled. You got to deliver it on TV, radio, newspaper, print, digital, you know, there's just certain things they got to do. And uh, otherwise the customer's going to be pissed. They're they're not going to pay you. So uh, 
but 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 outside of that how you get it done the technology you use and the timelines and it's like some are very organic and it's like hey phil gets it done when he gets it done and then we get executed and then some are like no he gets it done at two o'clock but then he gets you know <laughs> you know they got timelines they got drip campaigns and if phil doesn't get it done he gets an email and then you know it's just very interesting so what are some of the biggest things that you see right now um that they're lacking on or that they're just like kind of the, 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 the hidden fruit, if you want to call it, that they're just missing. You know, you made a great point there that when you're inside your agency, you focus on all the things that are different, all the things that are unique and special about your agency. When I come in as an outsider, I look at the things that are the same, right? The, the ways that your business is the same as all the other businesses that I've looked at. Right. And, and having that different frame or that different way of looking at things sometimes really clarifies, yeah, some of those things that you do differently don't matter. Like you can keep doing them or others of them are just, you know, they're not contributing to your success. So maybe right. we need to move those out. Right. 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 And so the, the, when I look at the, at the agency space, like you say, it's, it's highly fragmented these days. So I'm going to take the like SEO and paid search and uh, Facebook ad kind of businesses and put them to the side for a minute. So yep. the people that are selling creative services. Yes, like they're creating, a, they're creating a campaign for you. They're creating a That's physical, right. physical ads and logos right. and branding and everything. That's right. When you look at any even websites or, websites. or digital stuff, but, it's, right. but they're selling their creative. Right. What's, what's common about those is that they don't have a zillion clients, yeah. right? They tend to have... 10, 20, 15, 50. 20 yeah. clients. Yep. And part of that is because you're selling a piece of your brain. Too hard to and do. if you cut your brain in smaller and smaller pieces, it's less effective. You do less and less. So if you, yeah. if you want to grow your agency, the first thing to think about is you don't want more clients. You want bigger clients. Yeah. So if you just take like the top three or five clients that you had from last year, average those together and say, that's my new floor. I'm not taking any new clients below that. So every new client that I add, is going to be in the top 10% of my agency roster. Bam. And then I'm going to start dropping off the ones at the bottom end. Right. And that's the easiest way to think about growing a business. And, and many times it's easily done because people are requesting your services for, your, for the next campaign. So rather than that's chase right. the bottom and chase the, you know, hey, I've been doing these, these campaigns for 400 bucks a month and it just works out and we got tons of time. But then I got a few clients that are paying me, uh, you know, 1500 They're paying me 2000 right. a month your new floor is now 1500. If you want to do business with us, that's just what it is. And you get all these other elements that the guy, the 400 is probably not paying for, but your campaign is going to be better. And that's, that's just what we do now. And that's easily a way, like you said, to trickle off kind of the BS, the, the, the waning clients, the, the clients that take up all your resources and then focus on those top tier as the new floor. Right. If you sort your clients from the ones that pay you the most to the ones that pay you the less, I guarantee you all the pain in the butt clients are at the bottom half, are. right? Yeah. The, the ones no that matter what the industry, no matter what industry, because, uh, because they don't, their expectations are not good, right? They don't know what they're buying. They're unsophisticated. And so right. there's a bad fit between what they want and what you're giving them. And they're going to constantly look for new stuff or they're going to say, Hey, mm -hmm. look, I, I saw $99 social or yeah. A hundred dollars right. social month. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. Go check don't it do out. That. You should Go, do please, that. Please, please <laughs> get out of this ecosystem, baby. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, a lot of them, to be honest with us, it's like you don't want to fire them completely, you know, but they are the ones that are taking up the most resources. So you can just invite them to work with someone else. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And that's absolutely, especially in the beginning, <laughs> especially in the beginning, though, because I think oh, that's yeah. the thing you shoot your foot in if, if you're just constantly feeding off these people that are going to be competitive pricing and they don't really care about the value of your time and expertise. They just want to get down to the bottom dollar and compare you to the lowest price person they can possibly find on the internet as a comp and say, that's what you got to do. And, but, but guess what? I'm going to email you every day pictures and I'm going to do all this, that, that, that none of these other companies are going to even respond to one of your emails. And so you just, you have to, you have to literally find ways to do that, especially in this creative service line of business, yeah. because Yes. It is your expertise. It is your wisdom. As you build campaigns, like, like a lot of people forget this, like that's expertise. And so your 10th campaign, you should be charging a little more than your first campaign. And your that's absolutely campaign, right. Because you have more expertise and you're bringing this to the table. And if they, if you don't value that, they don't value you. It's like when you give someone a free ticket, do they come? 
Maybe but if if they pay a hundred bucks for that ticket, you they're know coming. they're coming, baby. That's right. And there's a That's big right. difference when they have that buy-in versus if I just give you something for free. It's just like, oh, you gave me to it for free, you know. Unless you really when love you me. raise your prices, you raise the expectations that your client has of you. So when that happens, they're more likely to engage at a deeper level. They're going to give you more chance of being successful because they expect that you're going to do more. You're, you're going to have a bigger impact on their business. They have more respect for you. Right. And so raising your prices gets you better clients, right. but it also allows you to grow your agency. And, and the people, when, once I say, okay, let's just focus on getting more like this top three, their, their next thing is, well, where am I going to get leads like that? Like, that's the question you That's need to be question. answering. That is where you need to be putting your creative thought into how do you do that? And how do you attract them on your website? And how do you, are you putting at the top of your website, we do hundred dollar campaigns. Well, you, exactly. just detracted, you just detracted the guy that wants to spend five grand. Cause he's like, this company is doing hundred bucks. They, they, they're, they're the low end. They're, they're not the, they're not the tailored agency. So pricing, it could be all sorts of things. And maybe putting that, it's a great point of perspective is if I am the one or three, three top clients and I come to your website or I come and see your marketing materials, do I just pass it by because it's too cheap or too, what do I need to attract to me to that? Putting my shoes on of me being the billionaire customer that's going to buy your business or going to buy everything in your business. I'm going to clean your shelves out if I like it. If I dump to your website and I feel like it's going to be weird and I'm going to get scammed or whatever, I ain't going to buy all your inventory. But through eBay, I might buy all your inventory on cards because I trust it. It's an eBay platform. They got security, they got protection. If, they, if something goes wrong, I can email them. They got support. But just some guy's website off there thinks he's got a million cards. I ain't going to spend a million dollars with the guy because I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't trust it. And so right. it's the same thing with your website. If they can't trust that you're going to be on this, the fit with their, their needs, they're going to pass by to the person they can. So I think that's just a good reminder, a really good reminder. Um, to put yourself in that billionaire mindset when they come to your website, even when, you know, or if it's not billionaire, whoever your top customers are, whoever your top customers are in your funnel, in your business. And, uh, and, and, and when they come to your website, what do they think? You know, do they think this is cheap? Uh, do they think it's, you know, one of the, one of the ways that we send off that don't buy signal on our website is we have this long list of things that we do. You know, we do websites and we do social and we do paid ads and we do, you know, and, you can't do all that stuff. There's no way that you're good at all that stuff. Yes. It's much better to say, we do this for these people. We do websites for dentists. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it's really clear what you're offering and what people are going to get out of it and who you're for, that is going to make it so much easier to get those top tier clients. So true. So it's just simple things like this, folks, even on your current website, which you can go on and edit in two minutes. Uh, uh, you know, your content and topics. And I think that's the thing that people forget your website, your podcast, your show, your blog, your video content show, anything you're doing can be revised, edited. Um, and, and, and your next show can be a little different. I remember that's right. when we entered, you know, we involved the top 10. I remember when we made changes in our podcast to throw in little mixes and in one year, two years, three years, it might be different. There might be different questions, might be different. And that's the kind of way we've evolved. And it keeps me on my toes too. But there, for me, guys, the reason why I like it is I know still somewhat of the format. And I think that's yeah. a piece to it is sometimes these agencies, sometimes these businesses are so spread thin on that. They don't even, they just going from project to project. They don't even think about it. Like they just. Yeah, when you, when you've got that long list of services or you're offering your services to everybody, then every new project that you get just, is like some kind of science experiment where you're trying to figure out how to right. deliver value to the client. Right. That is super expensive for you and for your client. So it's, a it's, both. it's way more profitable if you can do the same type of project for the same type of client over and over and over again. Yes. It's, and it gets better and better and better. And you don't have to, you can, you can research, you can bring in new mechanisms, but you're not going from rocket science to chefing to gardening yes. to painting houses to doing electricians to doing social media to doing a sports. I mean, there's just, there's too many pivots in there. You know what I mean? And so exactly. in my life, I always say you got to go what's best with you first, obviously what you're gravitated to, what, what you want to wake up to every yep. day. But, yep. and most importantly, we forget that, you know, a lot of times these things are up to us in our control and a little bit of time and thinking as well as, if you're at a stage where you just, you know, let's just be real. You're already busy. You got a lot of things going on. 
but you still want to keep progressing, that's when you need to bring in an expert like Brad, his partner, the anchor advisors. You need to bring in someone that can actually give you a coach, a plan, a tactic, a strategy. And a lot of times we respect the things we pay for, the respect, the things of people's time. And let's just be real. Like you said, you have a proven model that as it's repeated and rinsed and it's worked. And so uh, it might be tweaked for you, but most importantly, it's already worked for this gentleman for 20 That's years. It. That's so, it. so why, why is he going to go build rocket ships when he already got something working for him? My man, I love it. Uh, now we're about to take you into our top 10. Are I can't wait. Let's go. Let's go. Apple or Android? Oh, Apple all the way. Apple, Netflix, or YouTube? Ooh, uh, YouTube during the day, Netflix at night. There we go. I like that. I like that. Instagram or Facebook? Neither. Neither. Chicken or steak? Steak. Steak. Laptop or smartphone? Mmm. iPad. iPad. Love it. Uh, uh, Spotify or Pandora? Spotify. Spotify. Too much content on there. Movies or video games? Uh, Movies. Movies. My favorite, too. A great escape. Uh, reading, reading books or listening to books? Oh, reading books. Reading books, the physical. Listening takes reading. too long. It can. It can. And I think also the benefit of listening is that you can be doing a lot of things, but the negative is that you might not even listen to it all. You know? So <laughs> it's like kind of like podcast. That's where I use podcast. podcast. Let's go. Because it's light listening. It's, it's light. You might just pick up a few things. And, and like any good book, I remember, I forgot who said it, but uh, he said, if you get five things out of a book, just put it down and you're done. You know what I mean? It's like, sometimes you forget that you don't have to read the whole book. If you don't, if you got five things from it, move on to the next one, you know? And, uh, you know, the opposite is true for me about podcasts. I'll, I'll listen like when I'm walking or working out or something, but if it's really good, I'll mark it and come back and listen to it again. There you go. Really focus and pay attention. And that is, uh, that is a nice thing about the audiobooks too. They have some things where you can kind of mark them and put some place notes yeah, and yeah. things like that. So yep. uh, it, it's, it is important because sometimes those things are fleeting. And then it's, it, the, the beautiful thing is you can come right back to that moment, you know? That's right. And usually when you rehear it or you see it again or you, you write it down again, the more times you do that, the more times it sticks in that good old brain of ours. And says, you know what, T Huff, I got you on that one. Uh, when you're thinking about <laughs> when you're thinking about investing, although today has been rough, stocks or real estate? Uh, stocks right now. Stocks, baby. It's been rough. It's been rough. I did. I uh, I was uh, I did sell a little bit last year because I had some good gains and some of my high tech stuff, but I probably didn't sell enough because I, I always am on the other side. I'm always like, I don't want to pay the tax consequence. My dad's an accountant, so I'm always kind of contemplating that and especially on some of the crypto stuff it's like i got zero cost basis on this stuff and it's uh gonna be a huge tax bill but in a lot of times folks when you feel that you should sell a little more <laughs> take a little more cream off that latte uh i wish i had i wish i had done it but uh and now you just hold you just hold and you just you just you know if you want to reinvest it's a good time to reinvest but that's if you, it if you don't want to put fresh money you just hold the the good things you got and you just know that there will be a brighter day no matter what um when you're talking about vacations, oceans or lakes for you? Ooh, uh, probably oceans. There we I, go. I love the mountains. I really love the mountains. So it's a variety. You'll get the yeah, I, I do a variety for sure. I like the variety. That's fun, man. When this you this summer uh, we're going to the mountains. Actually, last summer we went to the mountains too. So I don't know. Maybe I'm a mountain guy. There we go. There we go. Well, there's nothing like the mountains, like the smell of the, like the, the the forest. There's nothing like that. There's and sitting in a river mean. watching nothing. You know, I mean, it's that's pretty fantastic. It's life right there. It's life. It is. That's life. life. That's life right there, baby. When you wake up in your day, why do you love being you? Why? Well, I can't be anybody else. There we go. <laughs> Do you have a, uh, <laughs> there we go. That's real. That's as real as it gets right there. Uh, do, you, <laughs> do you have a routine on starting your day? Uh, I usually get up and go to the gym. Uh, I come back and there have go? breakfast. Pardon me? I said, there we go. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Do the hardest thing first, right? And so get to the gym, get that out of the way. Absolutely. Uh, I come home, I have breakfast. Uh, usually say the, see the kids off to school and then I build a schedule for the whole rest of the day, like what I'm doing every hour of the day for the rest of the day. So I don't have to think about it again. So you do it by hour. That's how you do it. Yeah. I like that by hour. I like that. Sometimes people do it too, too much. I'm like, how the hell do yeah, you yeah, yeah. every, you took your, you, you scheduled your, your shit. You scheduled your, <laughs> yeah. your what the 
hell? How do you have a time like that? 10, 15, I'm going to take 11, 15, I'm going to email this person. Okay. Okay. And, and I never schedule meetings back to back. So there's always room in there. There's there we go. Space in there to do some other stuff. I got to learn that. I do four podcasts back to back for in two hour time window. I have to do it though. Cause that's the only time I have in my day. My wife's watching the kids right now. I got to do it. I got to get it in. I got to record it. Um, is there a favorite app or a tool that you like using in your day? Uh, I would have to say drafts Ooh, drafts. Or, or obsidian. I love obsidian too. There we go. There we go. What tell us, tell us how you use obsidian. What, what What's your use for you? Obsidian. Obsidian is my note taking app. So when I'm in a meeting with a client, that's where all the notes go. And gotcha. then that's where I build my daily plan too. So I can just link for each hour. I just click from that hour into that client's notes. I'm in the notes with that client. I go back. I know what my next thing is to do. And I just gotcha. keep going that way. And it's all in the cloud, if you want to call it. So you can just access yeah. it anytime, anywhere, any device. Yeah. Love that. Do you, uh, if you could sit down and chop it up with anyone in the world for a dinner tonight, who would you want to sit down with? Who, um, I, you know, I've been reading a biography of Warren Buffett lately. Ooh, love I that. would love to sit down and have dinner with him. Like, I think he's Legend. just wicked smart. <laughs> Legend. Yeah, my pops has fam- uh, got close with their family because uh, his, when my dad, my dad, it was, he had a customer and her, his, her dad taught Warren Buffett in school. When Warren Buffett opened up Berkshire Hathaway, he started selling them shares for 50 bucks a share. Oh. They, they, the A shares, the A shares, they held them. They held them. And so they've uh, built quite a bit of, uh, of incredible wealth over those years. As well. They have a big tax problem. <laughs> big time. Big time. Big time. They've been giving away hundreds of millions of dollars in, uh, in selling stock and doing that. So, But it's a very cool story because my dad got a chance to meet Warren and Charlie a few times uh, out there at the Berkshire Hathaway meetings. And, yeah, that's um, awesome. Nothing more humbling than going by that guy's house, man, because he's a humble guy, even though he's built such incredible wealth. And I think that everyone can read Snowball and, and the books that, that are about Warren. I also read The Art of uh, Charlie Munger, The Tao of Charlie Munger, I think it's called. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a book about... Charlie Munger and like kind of quotes and things about it that he says. Yeah. I love Charlie Munger. I think he is the the yin to the yang of that company. And if they, did, they didn't have him. Berkshire would not be exactly the same. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I read a book recently where he interviewed a whole bunch of investing uh, of famous investors. And the ones that were partnerships were the most fascinating because it was a lot of people who had that yin and yang, yep. you know, someone that, you know, Warren Buffett says that, He's got an 800 number to call if he ever wants to buy an airline again, mm. you know, and like having that person to talk you off the ledge when you think you're so smart, right? That's really critical. And he's doing it now with all his managers, you know, yeah. like some of those managers got him to Apple. Had he not gone into Apple, like I was telling my dad, he looks like a wizard now for getting into that stock. You know, it's a huge percentage of the company's net worth and he did yeah. it at a good price. And, uh, you know, I always told him he should have got into the BTC early. He should have got in a few of these things and just put a small percentage in it because you look like the wizard even more. But at the end of the day, you can't get into everything. So that's part of his strategy and part of why it works so well. And uh, like yourself, it's like you just focus on that thing and you focus on the customer and you don't get diverted. And that works. Um, and so uh, I love it, man. I love your soul. I love your energy. I absolutely think that more and more of our agencies need this type of service. Please tell our listeners where is your favorite place for them to learn more about the agency? Well, if you go to anchoradvisors.com slash growth dash phase, so anchoradvisors.com slash growth dash phase, there's an assessment there that kind of tells you where you are in the process of growing your agency. And at, when you get to that last question, it'll give you kind of some, some really focused tips about how to move from where you are to that next stage. That's probably the best thing for you uh, to go. But also, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on. I'm at Brad Ferris on LinkedIn, and uh, I post there a couple times a week. So there's lots of good stuff there too. Let's go. We'll put both those in the show notes. Uh, the growth phase, the the slash growth phase, where you can take advantage of that. Uh, thank you for that. That's a great thing for people. I think more and more of us need to just have an extra checkout, see what we can do better. And also yeah. at the end of the day, it helps you too. Let's just be real. It helps my man too. But then also, if you want to connect to his content, check him out on LinkedIn, Brad Ferris on LinkedIn. Uh, but dude, I appreciate you, my man. I, I think yeah, that this is great to be here. Such a needed service. It's such a needed thing in, in an agency space because more of us don't think about that. And it's hard right now. It's harder and harder and harder and harder and harder with the last couple of years. Um, and more important to think about ways to adapt and evolve. And, and uh, we had just a gentleman talking about the soul of businesses and just the things you can do to, to, uh, to 
realize we got to, otherwise you're going to be out of business. That's um, it. And, uh, and you can solve that problem with revenue because revenue solves a lot of the problems, folks. Uh, it does. <laughs> it solves a lot of problems, baby. Look, talk to Mr. Amazon. He's got the revenue machine. Let's go. Um, but, folks, you've been hanging out with Mr. Brad Ferris and Travis Tutal and Huff. We want to thank you again for your time today. And let's keep being real. What another epic episode and uh if you enjoyed the episode today can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast the b-real show on itunes or your favorite podcast platform and also take a little time today if you don't mind and give your boy t huff a review i would really super appreciate it and thank you so much for listening today we're all going through a lot right now and real-time outsource my business is giving back to local and small businesses through our social media services and campaigns, we are actually helping small businesses get more exposure during these times and also when we get through these times. At the end of the day, we don't know how long this is all gonna last, but most importantly, you gotta think about your business right now. Take it seriously. So come check us out at realtimeoutsource.com, realtimeoutsource.com, and we would love for you to qualify and get the process started where we can take a look at your business and see if we can qualify you for some of our services. Um, at uh, little to no cost for most of the businesses. And, uh, and, and some businesses, you know, you're going to have to pay, but that's just part of life, right? But most importantly is that I think this is the time, folks, that you can actually help thrive in your business. And so I would love to help you personally with our team. We're all going through a tough time right now. So take advantage of us, realtimeoutsource.com. Check us out, and we would love to do some business with you and help you with your social and digital media in 2020 and beyond.